Okay, so my name is Mary Farron, and um, I'm a Newfoundlander, and I grew up in St. John's, and um, I moved away for a number of years and have come back and uh, have been here for, well, nine, been back for 19 years. I see myself as an early childhood educator first. I work in the Parent Child Mother Goose program, and um, which is an oral language play program for parents and um, young children, preschool children. In 1982, I got my first job when I graduated from high school at Daybreak, and um, I always loved working with families. And then um, when I moved away, I was a nanny for a family for a number of years. And then when I came back to Newfoundland first, actually, I um, was really uh, looking to meet people with children because I had my first daughter at that point. And I'd, all my friends uh, were still single and on the party scene, and um, I couldn't keep up anymore. So I said uh, I had to find people. And in those days, I know that's a long time ago now, there was a family resource center on Harvey Road. And I hooked in with those women there. And uh, unfortunately, um, they were only open for a number of years, and uh, the funding got cut. So a group of us got together and started the George Street Family Play Group. And that's kind of what started this whole journey, really, I guess, in some ways. Um, I met up with Catherine Greer through that. I started a home daycare. Um, and Catherine was looking for somebody to start the Parent Child Mother Goose and asked me would I be interested. So I did the training, and that kind of led into all those other things. In those days, it was only really in Toronto. Catherine was one of the founding members, and um, they didn't really have, they hadn't really sorted out what that looked like. So um, we knew we really wanted this to be in Newfoundland, so we kind of created, we based it on the training that came out of Toronto, but suited it more to Newfoundland. And then I worked, mentored with Catherine Greer for five years. One of the wonderful gifts that came out of this whole process for me has been to discover Newfoundland storytelling. And um, when I traveled around the province, I had a real, um, an amazing opportunity to meet some incredible people and who told me wonderful stories and um, it really connected with me in a way like I'd been telling stories for a long time traditional tales is what I tell but the first time I heard um, Anita Best tell a traditional jack tale I just knew this is what I'm going to do first of all I think that yes it could be gone if we don't preserve it I mean I feel strongly about that but in saying that we can't keep something stagnant. Something like storytelling, for example, particularly any kind of oral tradition, that is always changing. And there is no original story of Jack. I mean, maybe there is, yes, there is. There is an original story of Jack that came from somewhere and it got carried over to Newfoundland. And as it moved from community to community, it changed and formed. And as the years went by, it changed and became part of the culture of the time. And when I first started telling stories, I felt I had to be absolutely true to that story. Like I really got stuck in that place of how do we create that within that, uh, the true story. But the thing is, is we are here and now, and we have to have some reflection of what is happening to us here and now within those stories, or they will become stagnant and then of course they'll die. Um, how do we create the culture and still have it move forward into the modern day and, um, and reflect who we are now. So yes, I think it's really important to gather all this material and have it, but we have to be able to say, first of all, that we can change it to meet the needs of now, and we can't hold it in an archive and say, this is ours and we have to preserve it exactly like this, because then what good is it? I mean, who's, you know, my teenagers, when I go into a teenage class, I keep the story very true to who, what I believe the story is, but I'm also thinking about who my audience is because my story is only as good as, my telling is only as good as my audience listening, right? I mean, I really take cues from them as to if it's working or not. So I'm very aware of that. I don't try to bring it into modern day language or anything like that, but I do think about who's my audience and if I want them to be interested in it, if I want them to tell it, then I have to engage them on a level that they're going to understand. I mean, Jack is a character Although he can often be played as the fool, he's no fool. And these stories are very powerful. They're not, um, they're not jokes. I mean, they really make a strong statement about Newfoundland and who Newfoundlanders are and all the battles we've always had 
um, trying to find our way. We've really had a lot of hardship and um, we've always overcome. And Jack is that character, that Newfoundland character. He is that person who overcomes. He gets faced with all kinds of terrible things, but he just steps up and does the work that he has to do. You know, Jack is just strong. So, yeah.